Welcome on in uh, to another edition of From the Bleachers Sports Show. This is me, your buddy, old pal, your amigo, your compadre, uh, Tommy Boy. And we're talking about, I um, just want to give you my quick thoughts here on NWA Power, episode 13. Who's the third man, brother? Brother! A couple of thoughts, and this is uh, in no particular order whatsoever, so I guess we could um, uh, just skip around here. Um, you know, the tension uh, in this episode uh, continued between uh, between uh, Morton of the Rock and Roll Express and... Um, Nick Aldis of the Rock and Roll Express. And at the last segment there, um, you know, Aldis is out there with his with his faction, with his group, uh, Strictly Business. And, um, you know, uh, Aldis asked uh, Morton to uh, come to the podium. The guy got to talk things out. And, uh, you know, Aldis comes to the conclusion... That there is this tension uh, between them two. He thinks that Morton has been, if you follow the uh, episodes, has been sticking his nose in his business. And that the only way to uh, end this uh, this type of friction is to settle it in the ring. All right. So, stipulation being, um, Morton, if Morton wins... His team, as his team wins, actually, uh, Morton can't uh, wrestle, but he has to find three guys, and it looks like he will be Gibbs uh, as one. Um, he has to find two more. Facing Aldis's team, which he um, uh, mentioned will be the wild cards, and they hired a third person, the hired gun, so to speak, Scott Steiner. So Scott Steiner makes his appearance um, with NWA. Scott Steiner, who uh, still looks in shape, looks a lot different than when he did, you know, in um, his TNA run uh, when he was all jacked up. I uh, lost his weight, uh, lost some weight, has trimmed down as expected. It's hard to carry that type of weight when you're an older man. Now, I, I don't know because uh, you have to wait until the uh, rest of the episodes unfold. I don't know if this is a one-off uh, for Scott Steiner. If he'll be a frequent member of NWA. But he was the third one. okay and um and I get it in a sense this is a older yeah the, the, the people that watch NWA I think it's a good mix of you know new fans and definitely old school fans that have um you know, watched NWA from years ago so I could almost justify the Rock and Roll Express being there in the sense of, yeah, they're, you know, uh, in their 60s already at this point, and they're still on TV as your tag champion. So, but they are a team that you uh, equate NWA with. Scott Steiner now, you know, in his mid-50s, approaching 60. Uh, you don't really associate him with NWA. Uh, you associate him with, you know, WCW, uh, TNA, I think. Uh, you know, do the fans really care, like the diehard NWA fans, do they really care about seeing Scott Steiner there? Do all the other fans care about seeing Scott Steiner? I mean, you've seen him recently, uh, you know, in TNA. 
and I get it, some nostalgia, the old school fans, I get it, I get it to a point, but you already have, like, some old school guys, like, you know, older wrestlers that these people could recognize, Murdoch, um, and Anderson, I mean, I, I just don't, I, 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 I think I, I would have much rather have seen the third guy being, you know, uh, a, a guy that's, you know, um, a, a guy that could <coughs> benefit by being on NWA, a newer talent, let's just say, that has, that has something to prove that they could, uh, that the NWA could establish a killer, you know, a, a killer heel type of guy, a killer mentality, an animal, the, a guy that's able to do, cause destruction, a young guy that they could bring in and groom, but not, you know, not a guy like Scott Steiner. Just my two cents there. Um, you know, uh, another thing that was kind of weird to me, and I didn't understand, you had um, Strictly Business, who has this, you know, with, with the wild cards in there, who has this, you know, thing with, and all this has this thing with um, Morton, and the wild cards lost their t- the championship to, to uh, Rock and Roll Express, and they actually lost twice to them, right, in the wild cards. You would think that as they're across from each other, there will be a little bit more tension, you know, trying to trying to hold them back, uh, trying to do something. Hey, look, these old guys, Rock and Roll Express, they're the ones that took your tag titles. But that interaction, what you've seen at the podium with uh, strictly business and the Rock and World Express, and really, like you, like you would, you would never know that um, Wild Cards lost their belt to Rock and World Express. Really, no, um, no trying to get at them. That really um, kind of that felt a little bit odd. I would have liked to see more kind of like um, tension than there was in that segment. Um, Dave Marquez. Uh, and if you, if you, I don't know if you guys focus in, especially like in that segment, um, like like there was a line where um, that the uh, the the, the chan- uh, you know in that that promo where Marquez says he reacts without talking, his facial expressions. He reacts with, you know, a good facially reaction. Kind of like the way, and, and they're very similar to me, and I know this is a big, 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 a little big comparison, but they're similar to me. The way that Dave Marquez reacts when he holds the microphone to what the athletes are saying, the wrestlers are saying, Similar to how Mean Gene used to do it. So, kind of almost uh, almost very similar. Pay attention to uh, Marquez whenever he's having an interview. And, uh, you know, he holds the microphone up and he's reacting facially to what the wrestlers are saying. You know, the skipping to the opening segment there. Um, Tim Storm is out. Uh, and he's saying that, um, you know, the NWA crowd, the, the audience, uh, was, they were expecting a match, and, um, they weren't given that match, because, uh, Tim Storm backed out of the match, and he re- re- you know, he replaced himself. Uh, Nick Aldis re- replaced himself against the match with Tim Storm with Royce Isaacs. And 
and uh, Isaac's uh, it lose. I, and I'll say it. I said it last week, and, and I will say it again. Um, just like that promo that all this made last week, I think he was devaluing that title as if it's a secondary title when it's really not supposed to be. It's, you, you want your titles all to have equal value. Um, you know, Isaacs didn't come out during that segment. Um, all this didn't come out in, in that segment at all when Tim Storm is, you know, saying that, you know, uh, we didn't get what, what we were looking for. There were nowhere to be seen. Nothing to do just to kind of uh, defend themselves or do anything. Uh, just like, yeah, um, you know, I uh, especially expected to see all this out there. It's almost like, oh, well, you know, I lost my shot at, at the at the title, uh, no big deal, I don't care, you know, I lost, you know, I lost my chance to be a two, uh, two belt holder, no big deal, don't like that, I would have liked to have seen all this in that segment with Storm, as opposed to Camille, who's coming out, who, you know, week after week, uh, with, with that, that presence, that intimidation, Kind of reminds me of a cross between woman and uh, China. You know, further on, actually, when you had all this come out again, uh, you know, all this doesn't uh, address Royce Isaac's loss. Doesn't address the loss. To Tim, to Tim Storm, saying that rather Tim Storm um, is, you know, <laughs> sticking his, his nose in Nick Aldis's business. I didn't get that, but I guess that's the beauty of why Nick Aldis is this heel. Tim Storm was just simply saying, uh, you know, what he thought about last week and. They had Camille coming out on his behalf. Um, no, they were supposed to have a match last week. And um, no, he hires Royce Isaacs. And Royce Isaacs doesn't say anything about this at all, his loss to Tim Storm. Rather, uh, what all this does, and which didn't make sense, he's complaining um about how, you know, the team of um, you know, James Storm and um, Eli Drake and Anderson, Colt Cabana, just kind of you know, are asserting themselves as to why they should be in line for, you know, getting title opportunities. He then inserted uh, the wild cards in there. And then it turns up that the wild cards are not even in the match. They're then taken out or they don't show up and they don't even interfere in that match whatsoever. So what is the what was the what was the point of that? What was the logic behind that? Kind of furthers um, my uh, my my uh, my point that uh, I was uh, making couple of weeks back, um, I'm really not liking how all this is just kind of um, putting uh, matchups together, making decisions, uh, because he feels that he has stroke, uh, and, and that he's earned it, that he's carried the NWA on his back, he built this new NWA, well... How come there's no NWA management that's uh, coming out there and saying, "Whoa, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up"? Not, not the, you know, not the case. Uh, I, I, I really kind of sometimes what all this does, and, and, and I get that, you know, I get it. He's a heel. It's supposed to mean 
infuriate you, now he clearly is a heel to me. But you need some type of balance. You need the balance between the good and the bad, which is why I think that they really do need a on-screen, you know, uh, commissioner-type kind of, not an every week kind of like a Jack Tunney type of character on TV if I were to make, uh, you know, a, a, a recommendation. Still no women's championship, no title on the line after all these weeks here. We're, I'm sure a lot of people are still waiting for that championship match for something to unfold, but we don't have anything yet. Um, you know, the other point that I, I really want to make here is um, I like yeah, yeah, I, uh, a, a part of me uh, I, I get why you're doing it uh, and then again like uh, I get it in the sense that they are Starting from scratch, essentially, is what the NWA is. Rebranded, you know, trying to get a TV deal. Starting from scratch, from the ground up. Um, guys that are in constant conflict with each other. Like, for example, you know, um, all this who uh, was saying. You know, uh, Stroke Daddy, uh, I respect him, the future. Tim Storm saying all this, one of the greatest modern day champions. And I get it why you would do that. You know, you're building up the company. You know, you're building up, it's a new company, new faces to a lot of people. First time seeing it, you want to make it feel special. But in the same regards, too, if you're in a, if I was in a battle with someone and I hated someone's gut, guts, I wouldn't be praising them left and right. I'd be like, you stink, you suck, and this is why you suck, right? I think it's just a little bit too uh, praise happy for uh, my liking. Um, you know, just some of my thoughts from uh, this past week of NWA Power. Uh, just my two cents there. Hope all is well, guys. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you guys very, very soon.